series dealing with third John All right. and the apostle has received word that these traveling ministers 
have been treated poorly or improperly mm -hmm. as they went out through his orders to dispense the gospel by this individual by the name of Diotrephes. And he has shunned anybody's efforts to help these people. He has blasted the name of the Apostle John and, 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 and cursed him and his authority. And so the Apostle is writing this individual by the name of Gaius to encourage, to exhort him to keep on in his works of hospitality. Amen. All right. All right. We have determined that hospitality is defined as the friendly and generous entertainment of guest visitors mm. and or strangers. Okay. To be truthfully, uh, hospitality is the basis of Christian love. Mm -hmm. We welcome you in. We ask you to sit down and take a load off. We, we, we give you entertainment through, through music and song and songs. And, and, and we, we feed you sometimes with the nourishment of food, but we always feed you with the words of the scripture. All right, all right. So I think that feels or fits the bill of hospitality to strangers, visitors, or guests by the way of entertainment. The scripture speaks volumes about hospitality. First Peter 4 9 says, be hospitable to one another without complaint, not to be good because don't look for anything in, in return. Romans 12 and 13 said, we should practice in hospitality at all times, ongoing, a habit. And Hebrews 13 and 2 says, uh, the biggest volume about it says, show hospitality to strangers for you may be entertaining an angel. Why? Why? Because you're worried that if you treat somebody bad, it might be God? No, no. You're supposed to treat them right because you're a child of God. Yeah. Bottom line. Treat them right because that's your job, your duty, your obligation. Amen? Yeah. Why? Because God is watching. Yes. God is our ultimate tester. He, he tests us. A uh, uh, former pastor of mine said, what is faith if it can't be tested? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen? All right. So he is always on the test. And what does the test do? The test strengthens us. Yes. The test keeps us in check. The test keeps us down from our head getting big or our stature becoming above God's stature. Yes. Uh, we can't test God, but he can definitely test us to keep us in spec. Did you not know that even back in ancient times, it was a duty, an obligation of the secular world, the, the non-believers, the pagans, to support hospitality? They worship all kinds of gods, okay? They had a god for this, god for this, god for the fall, god for the sun, god for fertility. They had a god of strangers. And so what they would do was, if, if you were, you didn't want to, to go against the gods. So what they would do is they would give a stone to a person. It's called a zubalon. And the zubalon stone represented the person who was supposed to receive hospitality. And they would take it to a house regardless if they knew you or not. And you were obligated to treat them right. Now, I ask the question. If pagans can respect and generate hospitality, how much more do you think we should do it? The body of Christ, the children of God. Yes. More so, wouldn't you say? Third John is actually the blueprint or pattern for missionary work going on today. Yes. Yes. In my first sermon, my first four verses in the first sermon, we established what hospitality was. We, we also established three, three points about it, how to love and truth. First of all, the way to love and truth is to have a relationship in God. That's true love. How to have a testimony. How to have a story told about you from what you did from somebody else. But mainly how to walk in love. How do you walk in love? By having a relationship with Christ, which is established a testimony in Christ. When you walk in love, you're not just, you're not just talking it, you're walking it. You're not just saying it, you're displaying it, what you do. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. Now if we're children uh, of the living Christ, we should have some words to show for what we do. That builds our testimony. 
when people see what we do, what we've done, what we're going to do in anticipation, they understand, oh, okay, okay, he has a track record. Yes. And in this sermon, we, we meet an individual by the name of Gaius who has a track record. Verse 5. Beloved, you do it faithfully, whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers. John, the apostle, he applauds Gaius for his acts of hospitality. And he says, faithfully, do what you do faithfully, whatever you do. Yes. I love how he, he scripts his, his, his scripture because when I find myself trying to understand it better, I often turn it around and I get a better understanding. In other words, whatever God gives you to do, you should do it faithfully. Amen. Not every member is called to be a minister yes. or a preacher or a teacher yes. to stand up here. Although these are, I believe, the most desired position. Everybody's not capable. Everybody hasn't been given that gift. Amen? Yes. Amen. Everybody hasn't been the, given the gift to, to, to operate a kitchen. Everybody can't cook. <laughs> Everybody has to be given, say, necessarily gift to be a, a deacon. Right. Right. But but you can do something yes. to assist the people who are. Yes. There are no pew or bench ministries in the church. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 You find one, although some people create them. <laughs> or I, I just come, I just come to to listen to some. I, I invited a friend to church one day, and I, he was a worldly guy. I invited, you know, I'm doing my job, you know, and then he yeah. said, like, yeah, come on, come. Y'all got some good music, good singing? I'm saying, oh, yeah, I said, you can go to the concert. I said to myself, you can go to the concert, you can go see what Luther did. You can go see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> who are, who are? You can go see somebody else. Right. See some good singing. You can go hear one voice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and hear some good singing. But, 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 but he was talking as though, yeah, that was the reason he would come. There are no bench. Uh, or pew ministries. Some people say, well, I just go to hear some good music. Uh, I just go to, to hear some words that are going to word warm my soul. Well, if that were true, the word tells us that we were drafted into this army of Christ before the foundations of the world. Amen. If the word is true, we are soldiers. We were given a special skill set called spiritual gifts mm. for the sole purpose of using to enhance the kingdom of God through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yes. John commends Gaius for taking upon himself the ministry of providing for these servants of the Lord. Yes. Gaius saw a need and opportunity to serve. They would come to town and, and, and he would roll out the red carpet from his vantage point. Nobody told him. He would offer them lodging. He would set it up. He would offer them food. He would, he would offer them a place to, to relax. Yes. He would offer them money. Because they were on a journey. They were no doubt leaving this church to go to another church. Amen. Not only that, he would leave them a portion of the way out of town. Amen. Amen. You can't get away from that. Later on in the scripture, we find that, that, that he was commended for this by people. That's how he gained his reputation. All to enhance the purpose, his gift of the kingdom of God through the knowledge of Christ. God, uh, uh, the apostle John, he commends him. He saw a need, an opportunity to serve, but watch this, he took advantage of it. Yes. All you got to do is open your eyes, stay in the scriptures, ask God. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he'll get you out of the pews. <laughs> he'll get like, you might not want to do what he tells you, but that's always the case. Mm -hmm. We figure we're not equipped, we can't. Well, if God has something for us to do, don't you think he's going to give you the ability? Yes. He's going to equip you? Yes. He's not going to tell you to build something if he's not going to give you the tools. That's right. My aunt used to have seen my pastor and his wife, they, he met my aunt, funeralized my aunt. And she had, she had tons of saying, man. I can't repeat some of them, but uh, uh, she was a Christian lady, but she's old school. She was 96 when she died. And, and she was, uh, boy, she had some saying, no doubt it went back, back and forth. That was her man, back and forth. She was always thinking, you remember back and forth. And she had a saying. She said, when you own a house, there's always something to do. And I, I, I never caught the meaning of that truly. I understood a little bit. Because she was always putting us to work, you know, stuff to do over there, stuff to do over there. I got a certain age, you know, I say, look, I, I start to do it automatically. Wake up sometime and do it. I used to wake up and, and it'd be 10 o'clock in the morning. That was late for her. And I would say, 
Look at the house. She's in her 90s. She done moved to, you know, the big six foot stereo, old school stereo. She done moved to the other side of the room. She done back to the house, moved the couch. I said, well, why didn't you wake me up? She said, why didn't you wake up? <laughs> Some things are expected of us. And, and after that day, there wasn't no doubt about it. She was having the same. She says, she says, when you own a house, there's always something to do, to fix, to repair. A roof will eventually need pipes will rust and burst, carpets will wear out, grass needs to be cut, windows need to be cleaned. If you let the house sit, yes. do nothing, eventually you're going to have to dust it. Yeah. When you own a house, there's always something to do. So what am I saying? The body of Christ, the church, is like that house. Yes. Yes. Because we are born in sin, shaped in iniquity, therefore all mankind are born, born broken mm. like that house. Eventually. Therefore, there will always be a need yes. to do, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, pray for the sick, yes. help the unfortunate, reach the lost through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Gaius was fulfilling a need in the church. He took advantage of it, and he dealt with it. Mm -hmm. He saw a need. He took advantage of it. Matthew 9, 37 says, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are what? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of work to do. You ain't got to look for it. Plenty of work to do. You ain't got to look for it. Just stay hungry for the work. Yes. Through prayer, through supplication, through meditation. <coughs> and have a desire. See, when you're hungry for the Lord, you have a desire. Have a desire to go to work. So that whenever God calls you, you will come. That's right. And wherever God sends you, you're prepared to go. Yes. You don't have to look for something to do. Just ask God or ask the pastor. I love it. I said, when someone comes to Christ, he, he says, he said, we welcome you. We're glad you joined us. We're, we're going to put you to work. What you like to do. We have auxiliary. We have this. We're going to put you to work because our job is not just to sit here. And I'm not, I'm not talking about it because it's, it's, it's thousands of ways, ways to, to help the church. Y'all, the, the main way is just giving in your giving. Yeah, that's right. But don't let it stop there. That's right. I can't tell you how many has this man with. And, and, and I'm, I'm not prompting myself, but I said, Lee, I'm going to do it. And when, 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 when this thing tore, and I heard the pastor say, you know, we got to get it fixed. I know what he paid to get this stuff uh, uh, laminated on there. I said, man, no, 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 no. I said, I'll fix that. I took it. I don't think he even knew. I took it home and I fixed it. When the other one tore, I ain't, I ain't talking what I can do, but that's my gift. You do for the church because the church does for you. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Come on, give God praise. You don't have to do it for something. I remember working on when we used to work together in Valley, and, and I, I, I was young in the Lord, and, and I, I was jubilant, I was, I was girl, and I was, I was strong in the Lord. I wanted something to do. I was going to church. I don't think you had deaconizing yet, um, but, but but we were. I was in church service so through you, but I don't know if I had become a dicky yet because I don't think we had got to church yet. We were having ministry at the, at the job, and I was praying. I wanted to do something. I didn't understand me. I, I, I never looked and say, oh, one day I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to tell you, I never thought about that. I never said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be like him one day. No, no, no. God put his own heart at a certain point in time. But I wanted to do something. I wanted to help somebody. Going to church and giving my money and helping my church was fine. But I wanted to do something. So I prayed. I said, and I was kind of distressed about it. That was God working on me. I was kind of distressed, dist dist distressed. And so God put it on my heart. And, and, and I said, I prayed. I said, Lord, Lord, God, give me something to do. I said, I want, I, no, no, I said, I want to do something. I came to work sometime that week. And, and I saw this young man, this young man who, whose, whose countenance, his demeanor was, was just off. He was young, nice looking guy. He had it going on. He was working in my department that I was old. He was a welder, had a good uh, a, a wage earner. He was a welder. He wore a nice coat, had a nice freaked off car. I mean, he, he had it going, but his conscience was down and was low. And I said, what's going on? I forgot his name. What's going on? He said, nothing, nothing. I spoke to him a little bit later, and I said, I said, talk to me, young man. I don't know if he knew if I was in the Lord, but he knew I was different. Because he knew I didn't cuss anything like that. And I asked him, and he said, he said, I'm having some problems with my child. I said, well, what's the matter? Can you talk about it? He said, the babysitter, who was my cousin, he come to find, and this was a small child, was molesting him. And my continence changed. And I said, what? He said, and he started crying. This young teenager, 
strong and very. And, and he started crying. And I said, look, 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 look. Don't worry about it. We're going to put you some consonants. He said, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I'm going to pray for your child. I'm going to pray that, that whatever has happened to God will, will erase you from his memory or, or, or stabilize you so he will not be, if he was worried about how he's going to be affected. And I went to the stall of the bathroom. And I prayed and I cried and I prayed and I cried. Yeah. And when I got through, I, I, after, I was feeling so good. But God said, Lord, that's my prayer. All right. All right. All right. He gave me something. You don't have to look for something to do. Yes, we got a world of unsaved people out there. All you got to do is talk. And most of them are our family. Just turn around and look. You do it faithfully, whatever you do it for the brother and for strangers. Who have borne witness of your Lord before the church if you send them forth in their journey in a manner worthy of, worthy of God, you will do well. Who has borne witness of your love before the church. Gaius reputation was so well known throughout the church and in that reason uh, that some of them who had visited him had returned to their own church and didn't have nothing but good things to say about him. Tell him what Gaius had done for them. Uh, the love he had shown through deeds and action. Whether he had known them or whether they were strange. That was the big thing about it. Whether they were, were Christian travelers or whether they were these Christian itinerant preachers that were sent out, who depended, watch this, depended on hospitality of other Christians. In order to understand the, the dynamics of what is going on here, we must look at the makeup of the church at this particular time. Mm. Not its structure, its particular, but its proximity and its location. Mm. This is Christian life. We are located on Ward and Fruit on the corner. It, it is a church, built as a church. It's not a home, it's not a restaurant. It is a church. Yeah. Pastor Winding has a church on Nevada. I think it's Perfecting. And Van Dyke, it is a church. That's his proximity. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the early church met for preaching, Bible study, meeting, or discussion, the discussion they met in the home, people's homes. Mm -hmm. The Lord's Supper, Pentecost, they were done in people's homes. Many of the inns back then, they, they were known for their evil. And, and these traveling preachers, they, they didn't have a place to stay where they could rest their head and be comfortable and, and, wor and have to worry about waking up e either being jacked or stuff being stolen or killed. Mm -hmm. But when they came to town, to Gaius, oh man, he was the man. Because he went out of his way. He took it upon himself to say, I'm, I'm going to support them. He saw a need, he took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. He saw an avenue and he led for it. Not to say that, that many others didn't, but it speaks to him. And this is only only um, time in scripts where he speaks about speak about this person named Gaius. He says, "Whom if whom if they bring forth in their journey, Gaius ministry was providing financial support, lodging, food, and accompanying them a short distance out of town." Remember, this is the early church. It is grounded in love. And if God is in you, it should come out of you. Amen? Amen. He saw a need and he took advantage of it. Yes. It says, in a manner of God. Mm. Manner of God. Treating them as God would treat them. All right. Matthew 10, 40 says, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. The servant representing God. Treat them well would be the same as treating God well. Yeah. Scripture says in Matthew 25, 35, I was hungry, you gave me what? Some food. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, you gave me what? Something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. That's right. We are working for the kingdom. What's that, what's that saying they had? What would Jesus do? That's all this speaks about. Mm. Yes, Lord. I, I would hate it if, it if it represented by saying, what would I do? <laughs> or what would you do? Because at certain times, our psyche is not concentrated on God and somebody come out and blast you in a conversation and you're going to blast them right back as opposed to saying, wait, 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 what would Jesus do? Mm. But that takes the strength 
of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, in a manner worthy of God. Mm. Verse 7, who are not born. One second, one second. Because he went forth in his namesake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. Verse 7. John gives several reasons, the apostle, to continue in supporting Christian messengers. These, these people that, these, these preachers that, that the apostle has sent. I understand this is the early church. Mm -hmm. And this is how this is how the gospel was relayed into the world. We didn't have churches at quote unquote like we have now. So they would send them out to the highways and to the byways to disperse the word. He said, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing for, from the Gentiles. For his name's sake. What, what is he saying? To represent his name was the highest privilege to both messenger <coughs> and or supporter. Yes, sir. One could ask the question, what's in a name? Hmm. What's in a name? You know, we, we have, uh, when I was a, a professional fighter, when I was in, 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 in a professional martial artist, you know, they, you all, you know, if I, they, their names are given to them. You know, they, they call me lightning mix because I was fast because I hit, you know, and I had to live up to that name. When I didn't, they call me dead mix. People represent through, through the name that is given. What was the, what was the final name uh, who just, just wreck havoc? Iron Mike who? Tyson. Iron Mike Tyson. Why did he call him Iron Mike? Because he struck fear in his opponents before he even got in the ring. Because being hit by an iron mic was like being hit with an iron fist. What am I saying? You didn't get up. Right. What's in a name? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, what's his name last night? Money. Money. Mayweather. Money. Mayweather. Because he's the highest paid athlete. He, he, he's known to throw thousands of dollars from the balcony at clubs, parties, and strip joints. <laughs> they say he, he keeps at least. What they call it? Making it rain? Anybody know that? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Making it rain, yeah. He's known for that because of his money. He's living up to his name, money. Money, Mayweather. He's known to carry 60 grand, 60K, $60,000 pocket change. But that's for a little light events. You know, like who's around the city. 60000 this fight put him in the billion dollar bracket. Only fight. This amount of short amount of time in his crib. He is the billion dollar man. What's in a name? He's called, he's never been defeated. He's called, he's the king in the ring. Amen. I, and, and no doubt about that. After the, last night he even conquered to a point the boxing from this, this MMA guy. McGregor, king of the ring, never lost a fight. I'm here to tell you that I know a man. All right. Come on. He is not only king of the ring, he's king of kings. Right. He is Lord of Lords. Yeah. He, has, he has never lost the battle. And yeah. he's defeated the greatest opponent any man could tackle sitting there. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's the author and the finisher of our life. Faith. His name yeah. is, is Jesus Christ. His name. What's in a name? Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, yeah. for there is none other name under heaven given among men where we must be saved. Yes. That's right. Amen. We ain't talking about some earthly fight. We ain't talking about some physical fight. We're talking about principalities, rulers of the air that control all this mess we in. And he has defeated them on camera. Yes. And we have access to that through faith in the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. Somebody give God praise this morning. Yes. What's in the name? What's in the name? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What's in the name? When, when you mention his name, the, the demons will flee. Who, who was it? Who was it? That swine that, that they jumped in and because when, when Jesus made himself known, they, they jumped and they drowned himself. That's power. Yeah. Not king of the ring, but king of kings. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Second reason for showing hospitality. 
to those who are not in it for the money. We should show hospitality towards them. They are in it not for God, not for their glory, but for God's glory. They're not in it to make a name for themselves. They're not in it to get rich. They're not in it to, 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 to finance uh, all, all their needs and everything. If it comes, that's good. But they should be in it so that the kingdom profits. Now, now, if God should allow some of that financial residue to fall off on us, who are we to pick? Mm -hmm. But to seek after that, to leave with that expectation that I'm going to be a preacher. And I've heard this. I'm going to be a minister, man, because I want to drive a rose. I want to have a magic. <laughs> well, you don't want to be a minister. You don't want to be a minister. Not a true minister. And you could be a, I don't want to call it faith. You could be some of those, like he says, who are out for the money. That's a true sign of who you should show hospitality to. The third reason. <coughs> those who show hospitality, they participated in the ministry of those whose hospitality was shown. They became partners, co-workers with that cause, with that ministry. Partnership. It's like sowing a seed. When you plant a seed in the ground, that dirt will produce back a harvest. It's called reaping and sowing. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. It says, taking nothing from the Gentiles. Yeah. Christians should be generous. Mm. We should show hospitality to our brother, first and foremost, the household of faith, yes. as opposed to, to allowing the world to do it. We are responsible for supporting the church. That's our job, our duty. No outside avenues. That's our job, our duty. Remember when Jesus sent out the 12 and the 70? He said, take no provision for rely on those who accepted their message. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 10, 7, 14. Let's hear what he has to say. And as you go, talking about these ministers, talking about disciples, talking about you and I. Mm -hmm. When you hear the word disciple, don't, don't get sidestruck and say, well, that's the 12. We are disciples of Christ. That's right. We are modern day disciples of Christ. <laughs> Amen. And as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Did you hear that? Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper, those were the mediums of money, or your money belt. Mm. Nor a bag for your journey, nor a tunic, a coat, nor sandals, nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. God is saying, look, you rely on me. I'll supply the need. Yes. I'll supply yes. where you're going, what you're going to do. I'm going to look at it. That's where the faith comes in. Don't look for the world. They had these venues on, on throughout the, the road of, 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 of the Roman road where people would go, and everybody who had a God was there petitioning for the God. Oh, give, give alms to this God. Give alms to that. And, and, and God said, no, we don't do that. Mm. The church should do for the church. Amen? Amen. And we have... Uh, I heard this preacher say, he said so many times that he would go to churches and they would have, to raise money, they would have fish fries, they would have cake walks, they would sell candy. And, and don't get me wrong, if you've been to, if you are in, if you plan on visiting, that, that's fact. That's what they choose to, to raise money. But when they do that, they, they, they're beckoning towards the world. Mm. You, know, oh, you know, buy this, buy that. And the, the minister said they do that to raise money. And oftentimes, people have brought that to the pastor. But the pastor, before he was in this church, he said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. That's right. He said, we're not going to do that. Not to that extent. And, and I kind of understood what he was talking about. But later on, I realized because I would see some of these ministers, if God gives you something, He's going to give you the means to support it. Yeah. Yeah. And think about it. Think about it. Think, we think about it. When you have something and it's not, say, say, generating enough, two or three things could be going wrong. Yeah. It's yeah. either 
because you're doing it wrong or you're doing it selfishly, it's not your time. God, God, God is waning you. God is saying, I'm going to see if he's going to be faithful yeah. to walk this walk when he only got one shoe. Yeah. Yeah, I could give him another shoe, but I'm going to see. And if the pastor keeps on walking with that one shoe, yeah. he's faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We're not lagging by no means, but our day is coming. Our day is coming. Yeah, right. I see a temple. You understand? I see a temple. I see a, a big pool of people to pass in. And myself can stand up. <laughs> I, I, see a, I see a full court, a, a, a kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Sister T. And, 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 and the cooks, they're going to be back there. Yeah, thank you. I see it. I see, I see a, a, a convention hall where we can welcome in big churches and have big dinners. I see it. Yeah. But, but watch this. I'm, I'm not dying oh, for God. that. Yeah. Our purpose here is to preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. If we got a, a pot yeah. or a kid, yeah. preach the gospel. That's yeah. right. Do what you can for the sick and the lost. Yeah. God, he will give you the increase. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. He, he ended uh, uh, this speech by saying, the church doesn't have a money problem. Yeah. They have a giving problem. Yeah. A giving problem. Yeah. Those who practice hospitality, they participate in the ministry of that hospitality, taking nothing from the Gentiles. The apostle upheld the teaching that God would work should be supported by God's people, if not just for the responsibility, but, but it's for an opportunity to become partners with the truth, co-workers with Christ. We should never look at what we have. Uh, I heard a, a, um, a news report, uh, a brief commercial came on, and this this gentleman was, uh, child of God, was talking. He was saying, I went over to one of these third world countries, and I was riding down the road, and I saw people sitting. You know, they were sitting, and they barely had clothes on. And I said to myself, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, he said, a light clicked in my head. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I thanking Jesus because I'm not there? He said, what's the say? What's to say they're hurting? What's to say something's wrong with them? No, no, because because I have a home, because I'm riding in a car. No, it ain't about that. The fact that I'm alive and breathing, that's enough right there. The fact that they're alive and breathing, God's going to take care of you. Yes. Last but not least, verse 8. Verse 8 actually reiterates what verse 7 says. We therefore are to receive such that we may become fellow workers with the truth. Mm -hmm. In other words, we therefore ought to give support yes. so that we may become fellow workers. What he is saying is that the messenger bore Jesus' name and took nothing from the believers. The saints were to underwrite, take care, support their ministry. And the same thing goes today. We deal with a lot of, of, of outside things, maybe uh, the pastor does that, that we don't see. You know, or he, he will come up with a concept or somebody will bring it to his attention. But it's all God. It's all for the purpose. We had one with these, with these young kids who were coming and who were hungry and eating. What did we do? Everybody, and I bless your heart, everybody, they brought clothes. They, 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 they brought shoes and stuff. They would come in hungry and they looked. They would come in dressed scavenging. We got them closed. Amen. Now watch this. They haven't been back. Have we lost anything? No. no. We're sowing the blessings in heaven. Yes. Why? Because we are co-workers with Christ. Yes. Because we are walking in the truth, walking in the light, walking in his way. If you take anything with you this evening, understand that we have a job, a duty, and obligation to serve God. And it doesn't mean that that whatever we receive or we get establishes that we're doing that. The fact that God knows he has your blessings stored up. And if you don't have it from your standpoint, well, maybe God is waiting on you. Waiting on you to, to say to yourself, God, I'm content in whatever I am. That's the devil Paul said. Whether I be rich or poor, whether I be hungry, whether I be fool, I'm going to be content to be a co-worker of Christ. Come on, give God praise this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
church. Amen. 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 Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to be your name of praise and glory and honor. Thank you for everything that is real. Thank you for this messenger and this message. Heavenly Father, allow us to understand that the hospitality of the church is what draws people to Jesus Christ. We have to show love to one another first. We have to show love in the household of God first before the world can see how God has shown love to us. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that these who are here today will learn now how to live and walk through hospitality as a Christian. There may be somebody here who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, please repeat this prayer after me if you're here today. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you as humble as I know how, believing that I am a sinner, born in sin, shaped into iniquity. But I right now believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I renounce sin and I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. The doors of the church all over let us all stand as you come. How great is our God. 